What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy, man? Still Brian got the frog coming at you with another reaction video. The story of the only African footballer to ever win a Ballon d'Or, Mr. George Weah, father of Mr. Timothy Weah, Helen by way of United States of America, United States men's national team, score him a goal for us in the goddamn World Cup against Wales, man. Shout out my boy Tim Weah, definitely one of my favorite players on the team. But y'all always tell me his daddy was that guy. His daddy wasn't goddamn bad in Dior. And his daddy is also president of Liberia, man. So I never seen uh, Mr. George Weah play before, and I don't know his story, so hey, See where it goes down, my boy Raymar Football. In the world of African football, there are a few names as iconic as George Weah. From the war-torn streets of Liberia to the biggest stages in Europe, to becoming the first African player to ever win the Ballon d'Or, Weah's right rise there, to stardom on the football pitch is nothing short of legendary. So today, we're going to look at how George Weah became known as the greatest see, African like footballer he played for AC Milan. of all time. You know what I'm saying? It looked like he played for AC Milan, greatest African player of all time. George Weah grew up in a small village in Liberia during a time of political unrest and economic hardship. Yes, Weah was just another child growing up in a country ravaged by civil war and poverty, facing challenges that only a few could imagine. Weah once said, the things I saw no child should ever see, but I knew that football was my way out, my chance to make something of myself and help others along the way. He looks so much like Timothy Way, you know, man. I know that's his father. I know that's father and son, but still, that's like carbon Despite copy the challenges he faced, as a child, Way played football in the streets of his village. He had no access to formal training or equipment. Way relied solely on his natural ability and raw passion for the game to hone his skills. Even practicing on makeshift fields using whatever materials he can find to create a goalpost. And at the right age of 15, man. he began playing for young survivors, a youth team in his hometown of Monrovia, Liberia. His skills quickly became apparent as he led his team to several huge victories. Then he was soon recruited by the team Mighty Barul, one of the most successful teams in Liberia's history. Despite being just 15 years old, Weah immediately made an impact on the team, hey, team as he became the driving force behind his team's success. His speed, agility, and raw talent were undeniable, and he quickly became the star player of the squad. Then a couple years later, in 1984, at the age of 18, Weah's abilities earned him a spot <laughs> on the Liberian national team, where he quickly became his country's fan favorite. We What's up with uh Liberian national team now? I ain't really heard much from them boys. Ever. I ain't, I ain't never seen him boys in a match ever. It was known for his incredible speed and agility, as well as his unmatched ability to read the game and finish goals. He was as prolific as a goal scorer as you could ask for, and also a master at creating opportunities for his teammates. With Mighty Barol, George Weah would win the Liberian Premier League title twice, as hey. well as the Liberian Cup three times. Hey. And in 1985 and 1986, he was named the back-to-back -back Liberian Footballer of the Year, already hey. cementing his place as one of the greatest talents in Liberian footballing history. At just 20 years old. 20 then years the following old, season, Weo like would it. leave Mighty Barul and join Invincible Eleven. Weo was starting to make himself known to the world. The top leagues in Europe just kept sleeping on him. However, his performances caught the eyes of scouts from Tonaire Yaonde, a club in Cameroon that would eventually sign him. And oh, as George Weah left Liberia for the first time is when Weah truly made himself known. He absolutely dominated the Cameroonian league, leading his club to two consecutive league titles. And the clubs in Europe that slept on him finally started to make a move. And just like how the European clubs slept on George Weah, today's sponsor, Mantis Sleep, can help you hey, the and get, get some of the get best money. quality Noticed by a hotshot manager in France, Manta for sponsoring this Is video. That Arsene George Wagner? Weah would finally be noticed by a hotshot manager in France by the name of Arsene Wenger. Yup. When he watched Weah play, he didn't even think twice of signing him to AS Monaco and personally flew down to Africa himself Shout just to greet Arsene Weah. Wagner. That's how much faith Arsene Wenger saw in the 21-year-old Weah. In his first season for AS Monaco, Weah quickly established himself as a key player for the squad, scoring 14 goals in 25 appearances. Hey. But his biggest moment came in a match against FC Nantes. 
where he scored a hat trick in just 19 minutes, leaving defenders in his wake and 19. showing the world what he was capable of. Wea would be named the African Player of the Year for the first time in his career for how he pioneered the path for African footballers to make it to the top leagues in Europe. He was one of the first African players to achieve success in European football, breaking down barriers and inspiring an entire generation of footballers right to follow there, his man. footsteps. Wea's path showed that African players were just as talented and capable as their European Maybe counterparts, else, paved the way for future generations of African footballers to achieve success. The following 1989-90 season, he continued to excel in the field, scoring 16 goals in 28 appearances and leading AS Monaco to the French Cup Final. And although they would lose to then league gun giants Marseille, Marseille Wei's performances Marseille throughout the entire boys. season earned him the French Player of the Year award. Woo! But it wasn't until the 1990-91 season, George Wea really broke out into a star. Wea would lead his squad to the Coupe de France title, proving to all the doubters the that the nobody from Liberia worth only uh. a 12,000 euro signing in the Cameroonian League had what it takes to lift silverware in one of the world's best leagues. So that's like the Coupe, the, the Coupe de France, that's like Copa del Rey. You know Copa del Rey, they got that in Spain. They got the FA Cup in England, and I assume the Coupe de France is like, you know, like they like the secondary trophy. And in his last year with Monaco, Wea scored 23 goals and had 8 assists in 38 appearances. <laughs> but you might be wondering, as a forward, why didn't Wea have insane goal scoring numbers like we've seen from other legends, or heck, even from other African forwards like Samuel Eto and Didier Drogba? After yeah, him? I was That's about to because say. Because Wea played as a forward for a team oriented system, rather than okay. a sole striker focused solely on scoring goals. Okay. Wea was always willing to sacrifice. His personal statistics for the good of the team. That's what's up. Because I was about to say, his numbers not too, too, they not too, too impressive. You get what I'm saying? Especially compared to like the other people I've reacted to. I'm like, you know, they not too, too impressive. But I was just finna say after he said that on why his stats don't look like everybody else. I was like, he probably a team player. You get what I'm saying? He often played as a second striker or even a winger to help create space and opportunities for his teammates. Despite the lack of insane goal scoring numbers, Wea's impact on the game was undeniable. He was a leader both on and off the pitch, inspiring his teammates with his dedication and work ethic. Physical. But what made him an effective forward was his intelligence and vision. And generally speaking, in this era, it wasn't that common to see a solo striker who would only stay up and wait for goal scoring opportunities. Wea was the perfect jack of all trades for the forward jack position. Of all trades. I like Wea often speak about his generosity and humility but most importantly the leadership Everybody and charisma eat. he had on the squad describing him as a true team player who always put the needs of the group above his own he had the uncanny ability to inspire his teammates both on and off the pitch Wea would then leave AS Monaco in what was the most pivotal moment Party in his career Sajima. and decided to sign with PSG and he hey. wasted no time in making his mark on <gasps> the club and on French football as a whole in his debut season with the club Wea scored 16 goals in 25 appearances with PSG finishing his runner up and failing to win the league and title, but he was still crucial in helping them win the Coupe de France for his crucial goals Again, in knockout situations. He's a Coupe de France but it was merchant. just the following year in the 1993-94 season that Wea was finally able to lift the league and trophy. Hey. And this was special because it was only the second ever league title for PSG. For PSG, at the time. he wanted they to okay. Weren't a powerhouse like they are today, and his efforts this season also got him named the African Footballer of the Year for the second time in his career. Wei's success at PSG continued into his final year during the 1994-95 season. He would lead PSG in scoring for all competitions and would win another Coup de France and French League Cup as Coup de France well. would also be the Champions League <laughs> top scorer, even hey. scoring this beautiful wonder goal against Bayern Munich, but would ultimately be knocked out in the semi I was waiting to hear about the in Champions the summer League, of 1995, mm. Wea would famously transfer to AC Milan. AC Milan. Milan were looking for a squad that could compete at the highest level, and Wea's signing was a key part of that strategy. Wea's first season in Milan was nothing short of spectacular. He would help his team win the Scudetto or Serie A title hey. while leading the club with a total of 16 goals and 15 assists in 35 matches. Winning a back-to-back -back and overall third African player of the year. Be. And due to Wea's brilliance for both PSG in the beginning of the year and AC Milan in the latter half, he would beat out Jurgen Klinsmann for the 1995 Ballon d'Or. Still till this very day being the only African player to ever win the award. Cementing his greatness in history and only further becoming an inspiration for the entire continent of Africa.
But if all there the time you go, spent in Italy, beach. easily Wea's most iconic moment in a Milan shirt came in the 1996-97 season. Milan were trailing Verona 2-1 in the 89th minute of a league game, when all of a sudden, Wea we would out. produce a moment of magic. Wea we would out. test in AC Milan's history. Wea would win a final Serie A title. Oh, did that part get copyrighted or something? Would come game when all of a sudden Wea would produce a moment of magic Wea would cast in ac milan's history oh the part got caught i assume he ran all the way down the field solo man single man go put the team on his back strap down and hit the help damn Wea would win a final Serie A title with ac milan in the 1998-99 season because just after a few months later he would be loaned out to chelsea but despite mm, Wea being past his physical prime, he was still able to help Chelsea win the 1999-2000 FA Cup, FA probably Cup. becoming one of the most loved players ever during a half-season-long loan, as he was able to score a game-winning goal against Tottenham and contributed pretty damn God well boys. with 5 goals and 3 assists in 15 appearances. Wea would play a very short stint with Man City and move back to Ligue 1 to play for Marseille, Marseille all in under a year before eventually retiring in the UAE Pro League. Yeah, they pass so him around. after looking at his career, some of you might argue that there were better all-time African footballers than Wea. However, it was Wea that really pioneered the path for African footballers to thrive and succeed in the biggest clubs and leagues in the world. George Wea has been a source of inspiration and hope for countless across the African continent, both on and off the pitch. As a footballer, Wea showed the world what Africans were capable of, becoming yep. the first and only African player to ever win Man the Ballon d'Or, as well as winning three African Footballer of the Year awards and leading Liberia to their first ever African Cup of Nations in 1996. And off the pitch, Wea has been a tireless advocate for peace and development in Africa. And now he established a foundation in 1998 that There's focuses right on education, here. health, and poverty reduction initiatives in Liberia. He has also been involved in various peace initiatives initiatives across the entire continent, using his platform as a footballing legend to bring attention to issues of conflict and right stability, there, man. indirectly saving the lives of millions of Africans. And in 2018, Wea was elected as the president of his home country of Liberia, becoming the first African footballer to be elected as the head of state. He, he ought to be the first footballer to ever be elected as goddamn head of state of a country. Form of change and development, promising to tackle corruption, improve education and health care, and create jobs and opportunities for the youth. And since taking office, he's been making progress, constructing new schools and hospitals and implementing new policies to attract foreign investment and improve the quality of life for the Liberian people in various other African nations. Overall, George Wea's contributions to Africa have been immense, both as a footballer and a politician, inspiring several generations of Africans to dream big and work hard, using his platform to make a difference in countless lives. His legacy will continue to be felt for generations to come, and he will always be remembered as a true hero of the continent. And for that, God he is widely Adore, regarded bro. as the greatest African footballer of all time. Let me know who y'all got as the greatest African footballer of all time. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all are going to say Drog, but even if uh, George Weah won the Ballon d'Or, I've seen a lot of people said that he didn't deserve it. I will leave that up to y'all to decide, but hey, from footballer, from African football in Liberia to president of Liberia, inspiration to all the Africans across the world. Shout out that man, George Weah. I'm out.